Hi guys, Rick Davis here again with you from LearnTVProduction.com. Today I want to talk about DSLR cameras and specifically one of the most overlooked things that people should be comparing when they first look to buy a new DSLR camera. In the DSLR camera marketplace, you're always hearing the terms megapixel and sensor size. Whether you're looking at Canon, Sony, Pentax, or Nikon, the marketing numbers are always used. In this video, I want to break down exactly what those numbers mean and allow you to get a better understanding of what it is you're buying. Nikon has come out with a camera that has a sensor on board that currently no manufacturer has surpassed in the same category. The Nikon D800 boasts a 36 megapixel full frame sensor, which their marketing material states has a 36.3 effective megapixels. For years now, it's been a battle of the megapixel. Who could cram more pixels into a smaller camera? Smartphones today come out with as many megapixels as DSLR cameras had just a short while ago. And those added megapixels have just added to the confusion. People began to think that their smartphones or small compact cameras should be able to give the same kind of resolution that a much more expensive DSLR camera could. I'm here to tell you that megapixels are not the number one determining factor to consider when it comes to camera resolution quality. Instead, you should be looking at the camera's sensor size. Sensors fall into one of two categories, CCD or CMOS, CMOS. The CCD sensor is slightly smaller and is what you'll find in most compact cameras and many DSLRs as well. The CMOS, which is in the Nikon D800, is larger and therefore has more surface area to capture light. A camera sensor is where the rubber meets the road, to mix my metaphors, or rather where the light carrying the image signal is deposited. Think of the camera sensor as a bucket catching rain. Obviously, the bigger the bucket, the more rain the bucket can catch. It works exactly the same way when it comes to light traveling through your camera lens. The Nikon D800 has an impressive 36mm by 24mm sensor. In camera terminology, this is known as a full frame sensor. It's given this full frame designation because it's approximately the same size as 35mm film that used to be used in SLR cameras many years ago. Many of the competing DSLR cameras on the market have a crop sensor, or also known as an APS-C sensor, which is typically 23 by 15 millimeters, quite a bit smaller. The D800 not only has a full frame sensor, but Nikon states that it has over 36 million pixels on that sensor. I want to clarify exactly what this pixel term means. Camera manufacturers often throw out misleading terms like the number of pixels on their camera sensor. In actual fact, a pixel is at the viewing end of an image, or what you look at when you view a monitor. The sensor's catching surface is actually made up of numerous photo sites. This is where the light information coming through the camera lens ends up being received. The photo sites are broken into groups of red, green, and blue. An 8 megapixel camera would actually receive light on 2 million blue photosites, 2 million red photosites, and 4 million green photosites. Collectively, they would produce an 8, an 8 megapixel or 8 million pixel image to be viewed on a monitor. So when you hear the term pixel, you should really be thinking photosite. I know it's a bit confusing. If you have a smaller point and shoot type camera with its smaller image sensor, each photo site would, in turn, be much smaller than the photo sites on a larger DSLR camera with the same number of megapixels. Another thing to consider is that there's a limit to the resolution you can receive on your DSLR sensor, and that limit is set by the aperture opening on your lens. An f-stop of 1.8 is going to allow more light to be captured by your camera's photo sites than say an f-stop of f4 or f5.6. Remember, the smaller the number, the larger the aperture opening. 
Allowing more light into the camera will also give you a higher signal to, signal to noise ratio, or put another way, more information spread out over the photo sites. Allow me to share something with you that will emphasize my point. A photographer friend of mine shared this story regarding the power of his new Nikon D800 sensor. He was snapping off shots of the kids playing off in the distance outdoors. He paused to notice some of the shots with his wife. She commented she hadn't noticed that there was a helicopter in the background. My friend then zoomed in on the image he'd taken, only to realize what they thought was a helicopter in the background was actually a bee flying by. Now that's a sensor that gives a lot of resolution. I hope I've helped to clarify the sensor issue a bit. As I said earlier, size does matter. It's important to realize that these things are never completely black and white. When you're doing a DSLR camera comparison, there are multiple variables like length of lens, aperture opening, and number of photo sites, which will have an impact on the final quality of your picture or video. Hope you found this video to be helpful. Please leave me a comment below and let me know what sensor size you're currently using and if you're impressed with it. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you'll get my latest with video and TV production tips. Just click on the subscribe button and a thumbs up would be appreciated too. Thanks for watching, guys.